doing well. Thank you so much for joining me here today to explore and create. Today we're going to return to one of our more popular topics and it is string art. And we will once again be approximating a curve by using straight lines, but it'll be a little different today. Here is what you will need. You'll need string, I have orange. A needle, a pin, a ruler, a pencil, and cardstock. I'm going to focus on yellow and orange just to make it a little more fall. We have a six inch by six inch piece of paper. So first I found the center of the paper by finding the center of the bottom, the center of the top, drawing a line, the center of the side, the center of the side, drawing another line, and they intersect in the middle. For this part, I actually worked in centimeters just because it's a little easier for me. I made a mark at every half centimeter. So 14 marks going up, 14 marks going down, 14 marks going over, 14 marks going over the other way. And then I am working on a piece of cardboard, so it makes it easy. I just took a pin and punched a hole at each of those marks. So we're going to start making our lines. This is our x-axis, the vertical one. The horizontal one is our y-axis. We're going to start at the first hole on the bottom right and go up to the top center. And then we're just going to keep moving down and over. And where I drew the lines is the back, so it doesn't matter really what the back looks like. We are just going to keep going. So you can flip it over if you want. You can work from the other side. So we're doing the next one. So we're going down one. And for my project, because I want the ones going up to be on the top. I'm going to feed that under this one. And go down to the next one. So we're moving in one that way. And then you keep working like that. So we're going to go over one. And like I said, it does sometimes get tangled, and especially if you're trying to hurry. So relax and take your time. And then again, because I want the ones going from the top to the bottom to be on the top, I'm going to feed it under and put it back in there. So then you just keep continuing down one and over one until all 14 on that side are done. I also find it easier to cut smaller pieces and just attach them in the back to one another or take the edge tape it down and then start the next one next to it. Working with the smaller pieces does make it less likely that you're going to end up with a knot. But like I said, if you get a knot, just work it out. If you can't work it out, you can always cut it off and start again with the next piece. And I might already have said this, I do find it easier to work on this sitting down, but because it's really hard to record that way, I'm not doing that right now. And 
And you do want to make sure that you aren't pulling too tight because that's going to cause your paper to curve upward. And then it won't look as nice as if you had nice flat paper. And you can decide how you want to do this, how far you want to go. So you could, when you finish this side, just make another one over here and have them be across from one another. Or you can do all four segments. I'm going to do all four segments. I'm going to start back up here again and just work down to there. So I am going to have a line going across the back, but like I said, it's the back. No one's going to see it. If you want, you could cut the piece there and just cut it off and start with your next one. So I'm going to start there. And we're just going to work that way. So I'm going to go over to the next one. And go up to the next one. And I'm doing the same thing. The ones that are going vertically are going to be my top ones. So I am going to go under there again and go that way. So I'm just going to continue onward. I'll come back when I'm a little further along. So I'm starting my last segment and I'm there. And we're just continuing working the same way we have. That one kind of came up between those. So I'm going to feed it under. And if it makes it easier for you to flip it over and just work from the top, that works too. I don't think I have a preference in that way. I'll just continue along. some of my uh, I think I may end up having to use a little more thread not sure that I'm gonna be able to finish it off with what I have here but we shall see So I did end up running out of thread, so I'm going to quickly add a new one. I'm just tying a knot 
at the end of this one, and I'll go back and fix that one as well. I'm just going to put it in there. So there's one more thing I like to do, just to give it a more polished look. So we've got that part finished. This open section in the middle, I think, might end up looking a little better if we did something a little different there. So I'm going to first tie off the one where I just left the end sitting there. I am going to grab a pair of scissors and cut those loose ends. Okay, I want to see how it's going to look if we just put a little crossy cross in the middle. So I'm going to go from this to that one. And then go over to the next one and go across because I think it just gives it a more polished and finished look. So now let's make a knot on that. So I fed it through there. I'm just going to feed that through there. again, pull that through, tighten it up, cut it off, and there we are! I hope that you enjoyed our string arc project for the day. If you wanted, you could attach this to a front of a 6x6 card and Send that as a card, you can hang it somewhere, you can put a backing on it, so many things you can do with it. I hope that you'll give these a try. I'm thinking that we might actually do a sewing project with this, so keep your eyes out for that, hopefully within the next month. And I hope that you enjoyed approximating curves with straight lines and making our project for the day. I hope that you'll join me again. We have book videos coming up. We have Explore and Create coming up. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you continue to use your curiosity to explore your world and your creativity to improve it. And thank you.